there's a saying in boat building and in woodworking in general, you can never have too many clamps. The truth is, it's not the amount of clamps you have, but the variety of clamps. Recently, I was looking through a wooden boat series book on planking, and in there, there was a chapter on clamps in the boat shop and a section about cam clamps. So today, on the art of boat building, we're going to build a whole bunch of Clumsia style cam clamps. So to get started with our clamps and the design that I wanted, I decided I would buy a Clumsia clamp. Uh, this clamp uh, costs around $30. They're uh, still made in Germany, and I think they've been made there since 1914, so they've been in production for a long time. Uh, though they are uh, nice clamps, they're really not as finished as nicely as I expected a $30 clamp to be. Um, so I decided that I would use this as a pattern for my own clamps, and I decided that instead of an eight inch jaw, uh, all I need is a six inch jaw. So I put together a uh, prototype for the clamp. Uh, I, instead of using beech, I used hard maple, and again, I used the steel bar as it is in, in the uh, Clumsia clamp. So with this, I, of course, came up with a drawing first. So you can see how the jaws of the clamp uh, will fit in here, like so. That's what our clamp will look like when it's finished. So here in the drawing, you can see I've got the dimensions uh, all laid out of what I needed to do. So the first task in making the uh, clamp was, of course, collecting my materials. There's really only um, four things that you need. The first thing was a stack of maple, and like I had mentioned that I used hard maple. So the first thing that I did was I took the five-quarter stock that I got from the lumber yard and I milled it down to one-inch thick stock. I then went over to the table saw and I ripped them out so that they were one and three-eighths inch wide. I then cut them to length and the length I determined was seven and one-eighth inches long. The next thing that I needed was steel bar. I cut the three-sixteenths by three-quarter inch steel bar to nine and one-eighth inches long. I then took it over to my sanding station and I ground off the fire scale of the uh, steel so that it would, that uh, sliding mechanism would slide along this a little better. And the next thing that we need is some pins, as it is here in this clamp. They used what is called spring tension pins, or tension pins. And you can see it's a pin that has a little slot in it, so it acts like a little spring. So when you drive that in there, it continually expands itself. Instead of using that, I've decided I'm going to use some brass brazing rod which is pretty strong material, and use those as pins. A uh, couple reasons. One, I think they look a lot nicer in there. And the other side of that is these small tension springs were, at my hardware store, were 33 cents a piece. Uh, each clamp needs five of them. And I'm going to make eight clamps. So as you can see, that added up quite a bit. With using the brazing rod, I lowered that cost down to only about 20% of that. Um, so I feel like it's uh, two good things. One, I'm saving a little money. It's material I already had, and also it looks a little better. The other thing we would need is some cork. Uh, so I bought some sheets of cork, and that is, I can see here in the clamsia clamp, are used on the jaws here to protect the material that you're clamping against. So the next step now, will be to mill these down so that we can taper them in, as I did here, so that when you're clamping it, the jaw will grab a hold of it. So the first thing I did was I clamped two blanks together and took them over to the drill press, and I drilled a half-inch hole that spanned between the two 
pieces of wood. After I got that finished, I then took it over to the bandsaw and cut off the extra, making sure they had left a little bit of extra so that I could go over and clean it up on the router. Over at my router station, I set up my fence with a, route, a half inch router bit in here. Now the router bit will cut an inch and a quarter and I'm only cutting off one inch off of the, the stock here. One of the things about hard maple is it really is hard. So that's the reason that I cut the extra out of there so that when I use the router, I'm not trying to take a very huge pass. That it really what I'm doing is just cleaning up the inside so I have a nice straight cut. So that's what we'll do next. Now that we have all of our pairs cut out, what we need to do next is to cut a notch in the bottom here in order to accept this 3 16 inch steel bar. So we're going to do that over at the table saw and we're going to cut all of the top heads first because we want a nice tight fit to that and then we're going to make the sliding head just a little bit bigger so that it'll slide nicer. So I've set the saw up so that the blade is 1 and 7 16 inch high. And I've made a very simple jig here in order to hold my workpiece nice and square and parallel. I've adjusted the fence so that with making two passes, I'll end up with an exact 3 16 inch slot in the bottom of the head. Then it was a matter of just tapping the fence over just a fraction of an inch to make it a little bit bigger slot. And then do the same operation as before. I marked all of them tight with a T and an L for tight and loose so I wouldn't get confused. The next thing to do is to cut this slot and to drill a 1 8 inch hole here so that it'll avoid it from splitting. In order to get a nice small kerf here, I decided to use my pull saw to accomplish that. I love these pull saws for fine work like this, and it's important to remember that it cuts on the pull, not on the push, so it's always good to come up a little bit. And also to remember that one side is for ripping, which is what I'm doing right now, and the other side is for cross-cutting. I put a tiny little countersink in here just to dress that hole up a little bit. After I laid out all of the cams, I then went over to the bandsaw and cut them out. After I got them cut out, took them over to the belt sander and cleaned them up. So the next step is to take all of the loose heads and cut a dado in here so that the cam has a place to ride in and out of. And this slot needs to be 3 eighths of an inch and as you can see it curves the amount that the saw blade does. So we'll go over to the table saw and set that up. I set up the fence to make a cut leaving 5 sixteenths of an inch. I put a piece of blue tape on the bed of the saw so that I'd know where to stop. I then moved the fence to leave 5 sixteenths of an inch on the other side. Then took a couple of cuts to clear out the slot. I 
I cut some 3 16 inch spacers to infill the ends of the heads. This may have not seemed all that important, but on this earlier one, when I was testing it out, I didn't fill it in, and you can see how sloppy that head flops around on there. Where one that I did infill the end of it, you can see that it slides very nicely. At the miter saw, I trimmed them up. Over at the disc and belt sander, I finished trimming it up and I also rounded off the top of the head and put a little chamfer on all of the edges. For this fixed head, I made a small template in order to mark out where I needed to drill holes and just using an awl to mark those spots. And then I'll take this over to the drill press. First I'll put a bar in here, goes in this way. And then I'll drill these holes through the bar and put some pins in it. After I drilled one hole, I went ahead and put one pin in so that I would make sure that I had good alignment. Each one of these pins is about a 1 16th inch longer than the one inch width of the board. That allows it to be able to be put in here and that a little bit sticks out on both ends, and then I'm able to put a mushroom head on there. And then cleaned them up with a mill file. On the cam lever, I drilled a 1 8 inch hole over 7 16 of an inch from the edge. So I lined the cam up with the top of the head and then used a clamp to hold that in place while I drilled a hole. I'll then take this over, put that inside there, and drive a brass pin through there. I then marked where the slot is, which is a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. Uh, which is the size of the bar, and then transferred that over to the face of it here. Uh, then I made a little template here in order to line this up like so, so that when I drill the hole that the pin is on the edge of the pin, touches that line, is then on this side on the top side, and is on that side on the bottom side. So we'll line this up. and then use that as a guide for the drill. And flipping it over for the other side. Now we'll go drive some brass pins in those holes.
Well, after I got a good coat of that deft finish on here, I really like that uh, it's a lacquer finish and it really uh, dries nicely. It's gonna protect this wood against any kind of grimy hands or if I had glue on my hands or something like that. I also gave the metal bar a little bit of a spray so that it, it'll be a little bit protected as well. So the next step is to put a little screw in here to help protect against any splitting that might happen here. Now in the Camsia clamp, they just simply put a little staple in there. So I think we're gonna be able to do a little better than that. And we're gonna use a uh, number eight, one inch long brass screw. So first thing we'll do is to drill and countersink a hole right here. That in and then tighten that down. So that should help it against any kind of uh, potential splitting. So I'll do that to the other uh, clamps. The next thing we need to do is to put uh, a cork lining on the end of the heads here. And I'm going to do that by using some double stick carpet tape. Line that up. And just trim it off with the scissors. And then um, pull the backing off. <clears throat> and take a piece of cork, I'm gonna line it up at the bottom here. Just press that on. Take a sharp knife and trim it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, just a little sanding block here and with just 220 grit and kind of chamfer the edges a little bit so that it won't get caught. And then just give it a little bit of a sanding on the face. The cork seems a little porous to begin with and that just kind of dresses it up nice. So we'll get one on the other side and then uh, start putting them together. All right, the, uh, we've got all the pieces made now, so the next step is to assemble them. And I'm going to drill a little 1 8 inch hole in here over at the drill press. And after I drill that hole, I'm gonna drive just a tiny little quarter inch pin in there and mushroom the head over. And that'll stop it from the head being able to slide off the end. Well, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. It was really a fun project to work on. And now I've got eight clamps that are exactly what I needed to finish this task. Um, so thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.